All right, I'm gonna do a, a little, t not really a tutorial, but just showing that it's pretty easy to get to Minmus. Cause Minmus, even though it is, let's see, there's the moon and there's Minmus. Even though Minmus is a lot further out, it's actually significantly easier to go to and land and return than the moon by quite a lot actually. Moon just has more gravity, takes more fuel to land, has a higher orbital velocity, takes more to escape. It's just every every way it's more difficult except for actually getting to it. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and head to Minmus. Um, first thing first, we're going to treat this just like we're going to the moon. Um, so we're going to launch just right along the 90 degrees and get a perfectly equatorial orbit. This rocket here is using all vanilla parts with one exception which I have uh, TAC life support, Thunder Aerospace Corporation life support installed and because of that to keep uh, Bill alive for the duration of the trip I had to install life support which is right here uh, so he has some food, water, and oxygen. Other than that this rocket is perfectly vanilla and what this actually did is increased my fuel requirements anyway so if anything uh, in a vanilla rocket this wouldn't be here this would actually increase your fuel margins further this whole landing stage actually theoretically should have just enough fuel to launch from low carbon orbit go all the way to Minmus land and come back what I did for the boost stage it's just a simple 1.25 meter core with a the, the LVT 45 swivel at the bottom for steering and then these external boosters are the T30s which don't have gimbaling so that I just have more thrust and then I asparagus staged it so this tank this tank and this tank feed into this tank and this tank when these are empty I dump them when these are empty these feed into the core uh, when these are empty I dump them and all five engines run at liftoff you'll see what I mean when as we go I don't know what the thrust weight ratio is but I know it's good enough so we're just gonna go ahead and launch it and see what happens <laughs> Dump the first stage. Oh, by the way, this is Kerbal Engineer, the greatest mod ever. It doesn't make the game, it doesn't help you fly. It just gives you useful information that you would otherwise have to go to the map screen or calculate by hand. I meant to put some some of the static panels on here, the just the little rectangular ones that you just throw on the surf on any flat surface. Those are really good to have even if you have deployable panels because if you forget to deploy your panels, you'll still get electricity from those. So basically those are guaranteed and you get power during launch from those too, even if that way if your engine doesn't have an alternator, you're good still. So now we've achieved successful orbit. Um, first off, I did want to point out this rocket does have every science instrument, so if you're missing something, you know, this rocket is basically, I have everything you'd ever need on this. So we're going to talk about how to get out to Minmus. It's for, if you're going to the moon, what you do is basically you would draw a straight line from here and then a right angle and you'd more or less set a maneuver note here on your orbit or, or you know, about here and you'd burn, you know, you'd burn at this point and that would transfer you out this way and you'd meet up with the moon here. Minmus is about the same except you go, um, you can start with that and then just move the maneuver around your orbit to figure out where you need to go, but it's it's pretty close to 90 degrees, I think it's more like 80 or 70. Line this up, there's Minmus, so we'll go there and we'll go, we'll try this, we'll just add a maneuver, zoom out again, and if you hover over this you see Minmus is altitude, 46,400 uh, kilometers, so we're just going to burn prograde. If you're straight up like I am, you can actually just kind of uh, eyeball this. Um, we'll just go down. Just eyeball it till it's about there. And you can hover over this. 47,707. We need 46,4. That's close enough. 
So now that we have that, you can see we're below Minmus. So while you're still here, before you even do your burn, you could go about halfway or so and add another maneuver. And this time you'll use the normal and you'll burn up. And here you can see that's where we're going to be. That's where Minmus will be. So what we'll do is we'll just our first maneuver node backwards along our orbit. Oops, let me zoom in a little. Let's go backwards and it keeps everything nice and neat and burn up a little more. As you can see, we can kind of tinker with this and boom, there's Minmus. So you just kind of mess around with these. Um, this, this burn here is going to be maybe 30 meters per second, so you'll have enough fuel for this. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I tried changing the maneuver nodes, but the moon gets in the way, so we're just going to stick with what we have here. I did delete this node, I don't know, um, but I put, just put it back. It's probably about the same. But as you can see, we're going to have a min-miss encounter with a 146 kilometer periapsis, which is actually really good. The, e the easy way to do this is use the maneuver button. Um, just to prove how simple this is, I'm going to go ahead and do it by hand. Okay, so we're approximately lined up. I'm going to get the dots on. So difficult. I only have the the capsule for torque right now. Okay, so I'm gonna realign because during the time warp I lost that. But one thing you'll notice: the estimated burn is 58 seconds. Um, but that's going off of this engine here, which is way more powerful than my next one. Um, and I only have, as you can see here, another. This is the same thing, Kerbal Engineer, but I have 314 meters per second left with this engine here. So that's not going to get me the 920 I need, so I'm going to have to take that into account. So I'm going to have to burn quite a bit earlier. I'll probably go for about two minutes earlier, just two and a half probably. Um, well, I'm going to assume this burn's going to take me two and a half minutes, so I'm going to go at... Oh, would that be like 1, 115, 120? I'll probably start at T minus, T minus 1, 120. We'll just do that. We'll call that and that'll work. And again, I'm going to do this all by hand, just to show you that Minmus is very simple to get to, even though it looks hard. The whole point of this is how easy it is to go to Minmus. Uh, might see, stability assist is on, I just clicked it again, just to prove that I'm correct. And we're going to hit Z for full throttle, and line up, and go. We're just about out of fuel. We have 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 0. We're out of Delta V, so stage that. And we're going to go ahead and throttle up again. And yeah, estimated burn is 120, so we want to go at T minus 40 for the rest of our burn. There goes our other boost stage. Goodbye. All right, we're just about at T minus 40, so it's full throttle with Z. So we're just going to continue burning again by hand. I don't have this on. I'm using by hand. And again, you don't really have to be ultra precise with these um, because Minmus is pretty close relatively, so it's it's not hard. It, you know, you can you can make corrections. You can always build. I was going to go after actually with the two-stage lander, which is usually better. Um, I'll explain that once I get this burn done. Okay. Just get the rest of this. This is always fun to do by hand because this moves around based on how precise you get it. There we go, that's close enough. And now we can see our next burn's 80 meters per second. Um, before I go check that and make necessary adjustments, um, what I was, what I usually do is I would make this same stage here except after the um right here i'd leave the life support attached to this as long as possible for this mod the life support but anyway you just add another stage here and you do a small fuel tank and another one of these engines and that gives you about 1800 uh meters per second and to return from minmus you only need i think it's like five at, at most 500 that's way over what you'll need is 500. i think it's actually only like 380 or 400 meters per second to escape and come back to Kerbin. You can see right there we're gonna fly out and I need to burn more so in this case what we'll do is we'll just line up with prograde just 
burn more because the moon is gonna slow us down by a lot so we very well may run out of fuel actually we're just gonna line this up to 46 about 46 400 okay and I think yeah so that's gonna be a quick little encounter that's fine um, we're gonna just add a maneuver so that way we get the uh, that ascending node right on the orbit and then to, to slide this over we're literally just gonna drag this way and a little bit more and there we go there's our encounter cool that's all we have to do 70 meters per second so we'll go ahead and I'm gonna, turn, I'm gonna adjust line up with that there's that and let's watch the moon come in now, and while we're here flying by the moon um, there, I do have a lot of graphical mods on. Um, another one I forgot to mention is distic, Distant Objects Enhancement, which is why I can see Minmus from here. It's right there. Um, again, you normally cannot. The game normally won't draw that from this distance. So I don't forget, when you land, what you can do is just lower your gear right now with G. There. Now I don't have to worry about remembering that. They're, just, they're down. So everything's still good. You can always just check that your maneuver nodes will still work. Um after after things like I double checked after this because you just you never know things might mess it off the the maneuver node system isn't perfect it's usually it, at scales like this it's usually very very accurate but it's not always perfect and we're getting close and actually if you do these early or late especially with deep space maneuvers like see I'm I'm late that's fine um, because the farther you are away the larger margin of error you have on the timing but the smaller margin you have on the actual accuracy of the burn, as far as your uh, your vector and your velocity, so you have to get those very accurate. So that's why I'm just gonna go ahead and go nice and slow, with very little thrust. Um, again, for min miss, it's less important because min miss is easy to get to. And actually, this is gonna be close enough. I'm just gonna call that good, and we should indeed have a min miss encounter. So now we'll just go ahead and time warp till it gets closer and bigger basically we're just gonna hang out outside of Minmus's orbit and let it catch up to us and there's the sphere of influence of Minmus so we'll stop all our time warping now we'll go to the map and we'll just make sure that we get captured here so just add a maneuver node and cancel out all velocity and actually we're gonna get nice and close oh. Yeah. We'll do 26 kilometers, that's good. You also notice the maneuver node is really just retrograde. Um, and actually what I'm gonna do, is instead of that, we're just gonna cancel that node. I'm gonna do this just using the retrograde marker, just to prove my point. So we'll just time warp slowly. We can see again with this mod, the time to periapsis is going down, so we'll know about how close we are. And we can see that it's at 350 kilometers, so we can also watch the altimeter. And this shouldn't really take that long to slow down and get an, an attain orbit around Minmisk. So we're just going to go and, and throttle up here. And this will approach negative infinity, and once it hits negative infinity, we're in orbit. And there we go. And now we slowly watch this come down. So now they swapped over because now it's on periapsis. So we'll watch that until it gets to where we want it. Which is going to be a little more than that. We'll do aim for, yeah, that's good enough. Time warp till we get down there. And I'm trying to do this as simple and straightforward as possible. It's just Minmus is really getting out here is the challenge. Once you're out here, it's so much easier. Okay, so we're at periapsis. So we're just gonna go ahead. I'm gonna eyeball this again. You can use maneuver node. It's a lot easier to do it that way at first. Um, but yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna aim retrograde here using myself. No, none of these. It's still on stability. I'm just gonna throttle up and slow myself down till we match it, it's close enough. And now what you wanna do is land on the day side, but also find somewhere, one of these flat areas to land in. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna go ahead and aim right there. 
I don't think that's gonna rotate too far out of view. Yeah, well, we're gonna go ahead and land right in this area here. And you'll notice we're not actually gonna pass over that, so what I'm gonna do is just a nice simple, so 90 degrees from that point, which we'll just aim up, so about 90 is roughly here. We will just add a maneuver like that. And now you'll see we're going to pass over it. And at the same point, we're also going to slow down to get close for the landing. And you'll want to aim so you'll overshoot a little bit. Because um, that gives you time. That way, once you're over, you could just, you just kill your velocity and drop straight down. Uh, so we're going to aim for the back of that little plane there. And that's our maneuver. 57 meters per second to stop. Coming around, men miss. And there's where we want to go. Line up and full throttle. And what we'll do is just. Whoop. Again, you want to get this as accurate as possible. Okay. And we'll see more or less exactly where we want. Um, that, that'll that be just fine. Using the retrograde marker is really easy because you literally, all you do is control the throttle, but it's it's just the way we that this used to have to be done is the way I'm doing it, which is just stability assist and you had to eyeball everything. So we'll fast forward until we see where we're landing. Uh, yeah, as you can see, we're actually, this is going to be quite a suicide burn. Which will be fine. We'll make it work. Oh, I might not slow down in time. Oh, I'll slow down in plenty of time, never mind. And you can actually see our shadow right there. And... Once we get a little bit further onto the flats, then we'll kill our velocity. Actually, so one thing you can do right now in a true science game, when, when you're when you're playing science or career, um, is you want to land close to where the flats meet a hill because then you get both biomes simultaneously. The other nice thing about landing on these flat areas uh, here is that they're exactly sea level. They're exactly zero on here. And this is, the altimeter is always above sea level, uh, so it can be kind of confusing in some ways because of that. So all my velocity, what I do there is I just aim sideways to try to get the center of the X on the, the dot at the top as best as possible. That's how you eyeball a landing, more or less. Again, Minmus is super easy to land on, so... It's no big deal. And we'll just slowly drop. Watch the shadow so I know how close I am to the ground. The other reason you land today. The alternative to using the shadow is you can attach lights on the side here to shine down. Um, and then you can use those to gauge your distance uh, pretty well. Go ahead and slow down just a wee bit. That'll be good. And we have tons of fuel left. I think I definitely over-budgeted my fuel on this one. But that's okay. We will be good. We're getting close. So we'll slow down a little bit more. Okay. And that lateral velocity will be fine. Just try to hit a little softer for the sake of realism. And there we go, touchdown. There's the sun, there's us on Minmus. So then what you would do is you'd go ahead and do all your science, you know, get the log your temperature and all that. Um, what you do like for these, because they're down here, you you know, observe Mystery Goo. Observe Materials Bay, you'd keep all the data. EVA. You just hit space to let go. And then Minmus has no gravity at all. So it's almost, literally almost like zero G. 
uh, and what you can do is just fly over here. It's going to be kind of difficult without breaking off my solar panels. And you just collect data, remove data, and oh, that's cool. Okay, there we go. Uh, and then this is the way I design my Minmus landers to maximize their delta V, which is basically how far you can go with the same amount of fuel. So then you grab all your data. You do the same for these. You don't have to, but I always do just in case these burn up during reentry. So you grab all your all your data and everything, and then you board the spacecraft. And what that does is stores all the data inside. So you can see review stored data. We'll have the material study and the mystery goo. Make sure you include an antenna. I included one on here. That way you can transmit data like crew reports, which give you full transmission bonus. Um, but anyway, this is us landing on Minmus. Um, and now the challenge is getting home. So what you do to get home is we're actually at just the right spot. But you basically zoom out and you look at the the orbit that uh, Min misses on. Same with the moon. Uh, this is the same exact method. Um, but what you do is you, we, we're going this way, and what we want to do is cancel out all this velocity so we fall to the planet. So you burn this way along the orbit. So let's say you were at this point here on this side of the moon. You would take off and fly up and then this way to return to Kerbin. We're actually just right here. So what we can do is just burn straight up. It's gonna be kind of weird. We're a little bit off, but it'll be close enough. You can see, as I zoom out, you can see the line up here and we'll zoom in. There's the line, it was right there and we're a little off, but it'll it'll work. Don't, don't you worry. This is, again, why Minmus is the best place to visit for beginners. I attach them on the sides, as you can see here, and I put the landing gear. That gives you the widest base to land on so you don't tip over. But I also attach these to decouplers in here, if you can see that. Um, and so basically right after I take off, I'm going to decouple these. And another thing I'll point out, so that's why I attach these solar panels to the main fuel tank instead of these. You can also attach the mystery goo containers up on here on the nose cone or on the side of these and ditch those too. And even all the science experiments um, to maximize it. Um, and then like I said, what I was saying earlier, the other thing you can do is just have all of this and then build another small stage on top and you just leave all this on Minmus and then, you know, you just take off, which is basically the way that the actual uh, Apollo program worked. They would land and then they would have another stage on top of their lander they would use. So full throttle and I'm gonna go to stage immediately, ditch those. And our Delta V shot from 900 meters per second to 1200 just from ditching those. You'll see we're getting closer and we're gonna stop because like I said we're a little bit off. So and you can see we're gonna be in a really weird orbit. Um, but, whoops. But anyway, that's how you escape Minmus. Watch Minmus Lee escape us. Goodbye, Minmus. Those, uh, the science pods should, uh, eventually stop and go back and crash into Minmus. That's the goal, anyway. Uh, there we go, and now we're out. Okay. And, again, we'll watch the periapsis height. We'll just burn retrograde, slowly until that is about 35 kilometers is where I usually return at. Um, you can also aero brake if you want. I don't think it's really necessary. Overcooked it a little. With a, If you're just returning the capsule, this little capsule, you don't really need to. If you're doing the three-man capsule, you should be good if you don't, just you'll want a higher altitude. Um, probably, you know, 30, 35 is usually a generally good starting point you would just based on your spacecraft mass. We're gonna go ahead and call that good right there. We're good, we're going home. So if I ditch this spacecraft right now, we're going home. I'm not going to because the decoupler will th adjust this. Um, so I'm gonna wait till we're much closer to the planet and that way we also get the solar power because I have the mod that will kill my guy if I don't have solar power. So we're just gonna go ahead and time warp and go home. All right, here we're coming into the planet. I think we're returning on the day side. 
Nice. Oh, there's there's KSC right there. One thing you can do, we have 880 meters per second of fuel left, so if you have excess fuel like I do, I'm going to show you what to do with it. Directions. My fuel margins are going to be really close, which I almost never do. You Once you get close to the planet, and that's good enough. I'm going to go ahead and flip around. Watch the periapsis. It goes down. So if you aim up, you can control how fast it goes down. So now it's going up again. So you basically just keep balancing this. And, and then that way when you run out of fuel, you want this to be about 35. There we go, 34, 795. That's about as good as I could possibly ask for, actually. We're gonna ditch this straight down into the planet. Goodbye. Yeah, my guy can survive without food, by the way. Don't, don't worry about the warnings. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on fine controls with caps lock so I can adjust this a lot easier. It's not as quick. Um, that way, it's always a good idea to try to m keep this manually on retrograde while you're entering. Um, with this spacecraft, this should be neutrally stable with the heat shield backwards. But you just never know. It's you just, I, I always just steer it anyway. I put batteries on. These might explode, actually. But, um, yeah, you just, just manually steer it until you're lower. So it's just a good, safe way to do it. Let me make sure you don't kill your Kerbals. If this flips around, he's probably dead. This capsule will probably explode at this velocity. We're technically still going to skip an orbit because our apoapsis, but we're slowing down pretty rapidly now, so I think we're good. I'm surprised the batteries haven't exploded yet. Oh yeah, the joy of re-entry. It's long. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off uh, SAS now. I should be, as you can see, it automatically stabilized itself. I probably didn't need, don't need to steer, but I always do just for safety. Anyway, we'll just go ahead and Right click on this, wait till this says safe to deploy, and we're, we're gonna land in the ocean. Nice. Well done. Alright, we're gonna deploy the parachute. And we're gonna deploy this higher up, because I'm worried I'm not gonna slow down in time. And we're good. We could have. Uh, gone back into orbit around Minmus and landed at a different site if we wanted. Alright, and touchdown. We have returned. Recover vessel. And Bill's ready for his next assignment. And you you would have all the science. Yeah, anyway, that is that's pretty much how to go to Minmus and back. Again, that that's this the rocket I built, I don't actually think it could go to the moon, land and return. It it might be able to, but it'd be really pushing the fuel margins. Having that big of a margin helps helps players who've never done it before anyway, because that way you can afford to make errors, because you have the fuel to correct your errors. So Remember I was saying, we, we went straight up, but let's say you're not in a position to go straight up to leave um, something. So when you're on Kerbin, and you want to... Um, and you want to go into orbit, you take off and go to the 90, right, on the nav ball. You point at the 90 degree marker. What you can do is wait until you're, like if you're on the moon or Minmus, is wait until Kerbin is straight above you, uh, and then take off and point at the 90, just like you're getting into orbit, and that will, that will point you in the correct direction to escape and go back to Kerbin. Hopefully you enjoyed, and uh, I'll be back. I'm gonna do a, a science series in this game. I'll be back for that at some point. But anyway, that was that. Hopefully you enjoyed. Peace out.